so my name is Elena Pisačikova, and I'm a PhD student at the Faculty of Mathematics, Physics, and Informatics at Community University in Bratislava. Uh, this talk is about a survey of CN emission in the spectra of meteorites, which we updated in the laboratory. And uh, the results which will be presented today form only a small part of a larger um, ISTA project led by our university uh, with Institute of Space System at the University of Stuttgart in Germany, and also other colleagues from France, from uh, Observatory uh, de Paris, and from the uh, aerospace, aerospace lab on the right took part in uh, some laboratory experiments. So uh, this extended step project was focused on uh, simulated meteorite evolution in plasma wind tunnel in Oxhuka. And this plasma wind tunnel is coupled with a magnetic plasma dynamic generator on the left. And you can see uh, the large vacuum chamber inside and the, um, and the meteorite sample over on the table platform. So, uh, evaluation processes were monitored by over 15 cameras, including uh, spectrographs, uh, high speed cameras, then cameras uh, measuring the three dimensional shape of meteorite samples, also cameras for uh, used for thermography, and cameras operated in uh, ultraviolet and infrared uh, wavelengths. So, most important um, instrumental. Uh, was for us, of course, I was able to take high resolution camera and also high resolution uh, actual spectrogram. Um, thus far, um, the plasma wind tunnel is the only tool that allows us to reproduce uh, atmospheric entry like in conditions. And wind tunnels uh, were used in the past uh, to, uh, to study, uh, study ablation processes of meteorites, but uh, the emission spectra of uh, these ablated materials were not the main interest uh, of this study. So our main goal is to uh, look for some spectral features of uh, or characterizing different meteorite composition types uh, through uh, identification of diagnostic lines and intensity ratio, because some major uh, differences uh, are applicable for most meteor spectra and even for the, the low resolution spectra. But uh, we would like to go uh, in more detail and we will try to update um, radioactive transfer model uh, accounting for some of uh, So in this work, in this project, uh, we want to apply uh, um, methodology obtained from laboratory tests to meteor spectra uh, from AMOS to improve meteor composition, composition identification without having any reference uh, which type it is. So overall, uh, we have tested 28 meteorites uh, in laboratory and in 2017 different meteorite types. Uh, these meteorite fragments were collected and prepared in cooperation with Peter Victoria from a uh, natural history museum in Vienna, in Austria. And almost a whole range of uh, meteorite uh, types and classes were tested, uh, including uh, irons, irons uh, stony irons and stones, uh, ordinary chondrites, carbonation chondrites, and echondrites. Uh, meteorite samples were cut into about one centimeter samples and with a hole from one side to be attached by copper copper crew uh, to the to the holder in a plasma wind tunnel. Um, the selection of these uh, meteorites focus mainly on uh, you know holes rather than fines to have less weather uh, Samples are less affected by terrestrial weather. So, meteorites were exposed to a high enthalpy plasma flow simulating uh, entry light conditions, uh, which were determined based on the high Hayabusa reentry location, uh, corresponding to uh, an altitude of about 80 kilometers and uh, assumed meteor entry speed of 10 to 12 kilometers per second. So, in these pictures, you can see 
examples of uh, equation properties of some literary uh, different types. So uh, before uh, before evolution processes and during the evolution process. So in some now some uh, results. So in this work we focus on the presence of CN emission in spectra of eight meteorites. So this CN emission is a suitable candidate for the presence of uh, organics in meteorites. Uh, so bodies originating uh, in meteorites of uh, bodies originating on asteroid orbits. And in recent years, uh, several works search for this dense structure in meteor spectra, but uh, unsuccessfully uh, due to the lower resolution of the system in which the CN, uh, uh, CN line is uh, blended with surrounding iron lines. So in this work, we present only results uh, obtained by high resolution actual spectrograph, which has a proxy of 10 times higher resolution than our anal spectrograph. So um, the differences in uh, in resolution of these two instruments can be seen on the in this picture. So there are displayed two different resolution and two different meteorite interest spectrum. So uh, the spectrum of Koshite and Mochiso meteorite uh, obtained by actual spectrograph are uh, marked by the solid line. And uh, the spectra of these two meteorites obtained by our image schema are displayed bar by, by this uh, dashed line. And uh, so two meteorites, two spectral meteorites are displayed. As I mentioned before, uh, the first one is the richest meteorite, the carbonaceous chondrite with a very strong uh, CN, uh, CN uh, emission with the main peak at 388.3 nanometers. And the second one is ordinary convert Koshite uh, with no with no CN uh, So uh, in this plot, in this slide, um, you can see uh, you can see meteorites uh, which we detected CN emission. So there are this is this uh, this meteorite with uh, detected CN emission. And we compare the expected correlation between uh, hydrogen and uh, CN emission. So, meteorites with increased CN organic content also exhibit higher hydrogen content. And this, this uh, emissions um, of uh, the meteorites apparently correlate with their uh, water and organic matter content. Uh, this result are also compiled in our previous work. And um, so you can know, know you can know the uh, some variable um, behavior of uh, CN uh, CN intensity ratio measure relevant to magnesium and uh, iron lines, uh, especially for for Northern County, uh, and it's caused by uh, it's uh, really rich uh, magnesium content. So this plot compared our expectation uh, of the CN emission to be preferred from uh, carbonation chondrite and a chondrite with enhanced uh, organic matter content. So as you can see, the most notable uh, CN emission was observed in or the in a carbonation chondrite mochison and uh, and alien and uh, also um, one and then in uh, the part you will like with enhanced for the meter content. And uh, we uh, didn't detect CN emission in this, in this ordinary chondrites, so they are posted only for context. But surprisingly, but the sur the surprisingly detect a stronger CN emission in one ordinary chondrite, but it was fine, so uh, it could be Potentially affected by terrestrial. So, uh, in this plot, you can see CN intensity ratio measured relative to iron line at 386 nanometers measured for all meteor, meteorites tested in laboratory environment, so demonstrating uh, apparently, uh, apparently, CN emission in carbonation chondrite and some 
uh, some distinct chondrites. Uh, then we have some ordinary chondrites with no CN emission, and also there are other meteorites uh, in which the CN emission is uh, predicted, but is uh, fainter or close to the action limit. Uh, we should note that we didn't investigate the CN emission only from this one ratio, but also from another ratio, and uh, also from monochromatic light curves, so from uh, time evolution of CN emission. So let's move to the next slide. So uh, in this slide, you can see monochromatic light curves uh, uh, that are in plotted relative strand uh, in this ratio, measure relative to iron lines and to magnesium lines. So it's frame by frame intention spectra of interest with detected CN content. Um, so, uh, the time evolution of CN emission is plotted on x axis and the uh, intensity uh, line ratio on y axis. And there are also shown five frames before starting ablation, uh, only for to show how a CN emission started. And uh, so, you can see that uh, early emission of CN starts at lower temperatures along with the uh, emission of low excitation uh, sodium lines for one or two frames after sodium emission. Uh, so now uh, take a closer look at monochromatic light curves in individual types of uh, meteorites. So we can start with uh, meteorites with uh, the richest CN chronicle so in carbonaceous chondrites, and we observe uh, the strongest CN emission in Washington meteorites. Uh, or which uh, belonging to CN2 uh, group, and then in alien density with three group and one cell. Uh, in the case of achondrites, uh, you can see more variable uh, behavior of CN emission time. For example, in the lunar meteorites, um, the main the main CN peak is possibly uh, about at uh, Point 16 seconds after starting ablation. Uh, but for example, in the case of Doppler Uri meteorite, uh, it was uh, later about 0.3 seconds after uh, starting ablation. But again, we have to uh, we have to note that uh, these meteorites were also fine, so potentially affected by Turks uh, And now we have ordinary and aesthetic chondrites. So in general, uh, we didn't detect CN emission uh, in these ordinary chondrites, but we detected in one meteorite wave one, and we can see uh, the behavior of CN line with time is more variable. So we can see that uh, at first, at the beginning of the population, the CN, CN emission is more pronounced and it's fainter uh, and then also more, more pronounced. And um, okay, so as I mentioned before, uh, this this material was fine. It was moderately weathered fine, and it wasn't a usual ordinary chondrite. It was the least metamorphosed ordinary chondrite, uh, which was which was tested in this project. But yes, despite that, we can assume that the resonance composition uh, was affected uh, was affected, and also uh it's uh, spectral features okay and in the slide we can see monochromatic light curves of much some meteorites and uh, are plotted uh CN intensity like chromium line to iron multiplets the magnesium line and also uh, manganese uh what we zoom in uh we can see again uh, the, the early early emission of CN emission start at the beginning uh, at the beginning of operation, uh, because it's a it's a low excitation line. And one thing I would like to uh, highlight is the significant flare at the end of the ablation. And probably this this flare is caused uh, by a resulting uh, droplet uh, of um, molten material with uh, some um, specific composition. But uh, yes, it's very interesting why uh, it's rich in chromium and manganese. We don't know. 
for now. Oh. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, to summarize, we have tested 28 meteorite uh, we have tested 28 meteorites uh, in a laboratory, and in this work we uh, uh, we focus on survey of the presence of steam emission. And uh, out of the test meteorite, most of the calcium emission was detected from carbonation convert and convert urolite with enhanced organic content. And in general, spectra of ordinary chondrites do not contain CM lines. And also, we uh, compare correlation between hydrogen and CM emission and uh, rather correlate with the water and organic matter content of these meteorites. Uh, we observed that CM uh, emission starts at lower temperature along with uh, low excitation sodium lines. And what are our next steps? So, we would like to develop a technique for the for either identification technician meter spectra for our EMOS network, and also we would like to test spectra cameras with a higher resolution. So that's all. Thank you for your attention.